Good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us uh, on our Facebook Live discussion with Fox Sports Detroit. Uh, we're leading you up to Game 5, the 1990 NBA Finals, the uh, championship between the Detroit Pistons and the Portland Trailblazers, the victory that, of course, capped off back-to-back -back NBA championships for the Detroit Pistons. Uh, joining us uh, today to discuss uh, that and, and other things, uh, Isaiah Thomas, the MVP of the 1990 NBA uh, MVP uh, of the NBA Finals, uh, Hall of Famer, the great James Buddha Edwards knows a thing or two about winning championships. And of course, uh, Mike Abdenauer, the longtime trainer of the Pistons and now their uh, director of operations. And we think George Blaha is going to join us here in just a couple of minutes as well. So we'll welcome him, him into the discussion as soon as he becomes available. Uh, gentlemen, obviously, we're here to look back and celebrate and talk uh, about the back to back championship, the 1990 NBA Finals. But of course, the, the, the topic of the day, and Isaiah, I, you're well aware because you've been on television all day talking about it, is uh, what transpired last night in the last dance. I, I know we anticipated um, it being the, to the story told in a certain direction, and it certainly was. Uh, your reaction to it and, and your thoughts on 30 years later that this is all still fresh as it might have been back in 1991. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting, uh, you know, for me, and it's been interesting all day just, um, you know, hearing the, the Bulls' perspective of, of how they felt. And then, you know, us sharing how we felt uh, during that period of time. And, you know, I, you know, peeking back, you know, peeling back the curtain and, and watching how the Bulls interacted with, you know, their president and general manager and Jerry Krause and, and knowing how we acted with ours and, and, and Jack McCloskey, the respect that we had for, for Jack and, and uh, you know, how, and, and uh, I guess the, the turbulence that was going on with the Bulls with Jerry Krause has been interesting. And then the, the, the conversation around us, us walking off the court, uh, you know, what I just tried to do today was just make sure that I, I gave, you know, the audience, the, the whole picture in terms of what was going on in the city, what was going on with us as a team, and also the comments that had been made uh, about us in terms of, you know, we were bad champions. We we didn't deserve to be champions. We didn't earn it, and how that affected all of us during that period of time, which led up to a decision where you know we we ended up uh, you know walking off the court. But you know that's not to excuse any of our behavior at that time. Uh, and looking back on it, you know, 30 years ago, you know, I think all of us knowing what we know now and uh, how you know, bigger deal this has become. I think all of us would have made a decision to, you know, shake their hands, congratulate them and, and, and move on. James, what was your take as you, you watched all of that last night? <laughs> you want the R version or the PG version? <laughs> you know, I don't know what, what are the rules on Facebook live? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it, they didn't do Detroit good in that uh, that segment, and uh, it was kind of disappointing. I kind of figured it was going to happen. You know, it's still bad feelings, I guess. Even though Michael said there's no bad feelings, I think there still are some. Uh, it's just this thing where you know everybody's had moved on. It's thirty years ago, and you know at that time we were at two dead places. I mean, they were talking bad about us the last couple of games in that final series, and they were just saying we were thugs, we're this, we're that. They didn't give us any respect at all, so we didn't give them any respect either. But but they don't get to where they get to without the lessons learned from you guys. And Isaiah, you've always been good to give credit to the Celtics and the Lakers and what you learned in, in those battles going head-to-head -head with them. And uh, – they they reluctantly, I guess, will give you some credit for, for whatever they learned about being tough and, and being champions. But why do you think that hasn't or the same respect hasn't been shown on on their end the way you have uh, reciprocated towards the, the Celtics and the Lakers and, and what you learned in, in those battles? You know, I, I can only speak for for us as a Detroit Piston team and, and you know, Mike and, and Buddha are here and and. 
and they sometimes let me speak for the team. And I and I and when I speak for us, I say we, we are grateful and thankful for the lessons that we learn by playing against the Celtics, by competing against the Lakers. And, you know, while, while we had some, some tough lessons to learn, uh, at the same time, the, the Celtics and the Lakers, uh, they, without them, we, we don't become the type of basketball team that we became. Uh, you know, we, we made some crucial mistakes uh, down, the, down the stretch in a game five that we had a chance to win where I threw the ball away uh, we we made some mistakes along the way uh, in, in losing a game to to the Lakers. Uh, so we, you know, you learn from all those things and you get better. And we we've always have been, you know, grateful to the lessons that we've learned. And we've also have been very complimentary to the teachers that we learn from in terms of the Lakers and Celtics. Um, I can't speak why the Bulls don't don't speak that way. Uh, you know, that's their journey. I can only speak for ours, and and uh, we we hold those two teams in in high esteem and great respect in terms of lessons that we learn and the games that we play and how fun they were. You know, competing against them, winning and losing. <laughs> Well, they left out the fact that you guys beat them in 88 as well, I thought, that they didn't pay enough attention to what happened uh, that year as well. It was, three, it was three or four, if I remember correctly. Mike, as, you, as you've watched all this, and you were, of course, uh, directly involved with those teams uh, back then, what, what, what were some of your takeaways from, from what you've seen? You know, the segue into what Isaiah was talking about with regard to the trailblazers that we're going to see in a little while. You know, we had to face someone who eventually wound up in the Nate Smith Hall of Fame on either the Celtics, the Lakers, and respectfully, the Portland Trailblazers and Clyde Drexler. So you take lessons from all of those teams that you that you play against. They force you to work cerebrally, and if you don't think the game and have great basketball IQ, I don't care how talented you are, talent doesn't necessarily win an NBA championship. And to our credit, to Isaiah, to Buddha, to everybody on our two championship teams that went back-to-back, we had a very, very smart, high IQ group. And I heard something the other day that outside of the Lakers and the Celtics, there's only one other team that in that particular area that went back to back, and that was the Detroit Pistons. You yeah. know, Golden State goes back to back. Cleveland goes back to back. You know, you know, Houston eventually did it at some point in time. But at that point, there was only two other teams that went back to back, and we became the third team to do that. That's an accomplishment to these guys who – you know, carry the mantle for the city that entire time. Isaiah, do, do you feel, and James, do, do you guys feel looking back at it um, that that probably it could have been three a three peat, it could have been it could have been a four peat uh, leading up to you know the the eighty nine championships and, and ninety. Were there were there a couple left on the table? Uh, we we think so, and I definitely think so. Um, I think I think '88 uh, definitely could have been a championship. Um, I don't know if we were mature enough to win in '87 had we gone to the finals uh, after beating Boston. I don't know if we were mature enough to to beat the Lakers in '87. Uh, however, in '88, '89, and '90, we definitely were, in my opinion, the best team playing in basketball. And I firmly believe this in 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 '91. Uh, if, if I don't have, you know, what I call career ending wrist surgery right now. And, and Mike is here and he can tell you how, how bad my wrist was. Um, and I can remember sitting there and Dr. Kirk Watson telling me that, you know, I'll never play basketball again with this wrist. And, um, and I can't tell you how devastating of a blow that was to me, uh, emotionally, and, you know, Buddha, you, you probably never even heard this because we never talked about it. But, uh, you know, I, I wasn't supposed to be playing basketball ever again with the wrist surgery that I had. And, you know, thank God that I, I had Mike and a couple of other people who would wrap me up and ice me up and try to make it all right. And like today, see, I can only bend this wrist like, you know, maybe an inch, inch and a half. And, uh, you know, that. That definitely was a, a devastating time, not only for me, uh, but personally, you know, going through that, having to deal with that in in 91, because I in 90, and you're seeing this series, 
uh, I had set the, the, the NBA finals record for three point shooting in a series. And Lambeer had set the NBA finals record for three point shooting as a center in that series. So we, all game was expanding to the way it is today. Uh, we had the inside play with Buddha and, and Aguirre. And had we stayed healthy and had I, you know, stayed healthy, it would have been interesting to see what would have happened in 91 uh, if I was fully healthy. You know, and the thing about the injury that Isaiah had, um, career threatening and career ending is an understatement. The fact that he made the push to come back and play, that that's a testament to who this man is. I mean, we, we can tell story upon story about injury after injury, but when, when your focus is on trying to win, you kind of push everything to the side in order to make sure that winning is the most paramount thing that you're trying to achieve. James, you of course went on to win a championship with, with Chicago um, a few years later. What was that experience like? Was there a lot of talk about the Pistons in the locker room back then? Uh, eh, not too much. Michael was just Brian. He said, I'm the only one that can block, block that fade away because I come to sneak and get it from behind. Right. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> no, he didn't really, didn't really dwell on the Pistons at all too much. No, he was just trying to win another championship. And, uh, you know, he, he was a, he was an okay guy. He was a great guy. I mean, he could have been an asshole to me. He wasn't. He was cool. As soon as I got on the team, he was cool. And, uh, you know, for all the punishment we gave him, <laughs> it takes a lot for that. <laughs> well, well, clearly he hasn't forgotten. Um, is there any satisfaction in knowing that 30 years later, you guys still own some real estate in their heads? <laughs> I know. I mean, it's all in the past, but it's it's good to know that they're still thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thinking about I was just going to say, you know, it, it's for, for me, it's 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 really interesting and refreshing to um, to be able to not only, you know, relive these moments, but also to get the perspective of, of you know, John, Sally and, 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 and Buddha, who were actually on those Chicago teams and won championships with them. Uh, and, and to hear, you know, them talk about how we hated each other. We didn't like each other, but we'll take, you know, three of y'all teammates. <laughs> y'all can come over here and we can win. You know, it's, like I said, I think it's great entertainment. I think it's good theater and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been good. Yeah. Everybody's watching it. <laughs> and they well, and I, yeah. And I think, go ahead, Mike. They needed three Pistons in order to win those championships too. So, you know, credit to them to find the right talent. <laughs> you know, I think I think it also served as a reminder, uh, even through a different lens, just how good the Pistons were uh, back in those days. And uh, we've talked about maybe uh, those championship teams don't get quite enough credit for just how good they were and how good you were, Isaiah, as you pointed out, through the better part uh, of that decade. When you look back at this 90 championship and, and going back to back and clinching game five, some of the guys we've talked to in these formats, they say – they haven't watched the game since they played it. How often have you watched these games since then? And, and, and maybe what stands out to you as you, as you think back to the, to that night? Um, I, I haven't watched, um, you know, too, too many of these games. Uh, of course I watched it after we, we won and everything. Uh, what, what stands out to me is, is, um, you know, again, just how deadly of a, a three point shooting team we had become. And, and, and we were the first team in that era to really have had mastered the three point line, the way we were mastering it and going in, in, into the Eastern conference finals and into the finals. And in the following year, I thought that we would come back as an even more deadlier three point shooting team. And when we fell off, you can see that the Houston Rockets, uh, basically mirrored what we had been doing. Uh, they had the three guards, the three perimeter shooters, Elijah Wan, and then they had Thorpe. But I, I just, you know, if people are watching, just, just notice how good a three-point shooting team 
we had become and how damaging we were. I think in this series, Buddha, I think we averaged like 113 points or 112 points, something like that. Uh, yeah. So we we were not a slow down, you know, 92 point scoring team. <laughs> No, I think that's what, what people tend to forget is that, uh, you know, for the label of being the bad boys and being tough and physical, uh, there was a lot of skill on that basketball team as well. And a lot of guys that that shoved some of that to the side for the good of the team, because uh, Isaiah, as you pointed out several times, you had a lot of guys on that team that could have been 20 point a night or more scores and, and they all sacrificed for, for the good of the game. James, what, what, what stands out to you as you look back to, to that uh, game clincher, that uh, game five in 1990? Oh man, I, we were in Portland and <laughs> had my family down there. And uh, I mean, it was a good game. It was a, it was a very tough game. They, they didn't want to give up that, that game five. They came back on us. I mean, we had to fight our way back in the game because we were, I think we were down by 10, weren't we, Zeke, at one time? I always felt like we were winning. <laughs> yeah, I know. We came back and then, you know, Vinny hits that shot, 007. <laughs> yeah. Go in the locker room and start celebrating. But, you know, they had a tough team. They had a tough team. They had Drexler, they had Big Duckworth, uh, Buck Williams, Terry Porter. They had a great team. Mike, that when you look back to that night, is that is there something that stands out to you? Yeah, I, I think in the whole series, though, Mick. I mean, the the tragedy of our of our '90 season is that Ricky wasn't with us. We lost him to expansion right after the '89 season. But we picked up a guy in David Greenwood who made an incredible contribution during the finals, and his contribution along with Gerald Henderson that just kind of solidified what we had. These two guys were professionals; they fit right in. Um, it, it was wonderful the way they played. And at the end of the night, I mean, you know, we're down seven or eight with two minutes left. And, you know, Vinny goes on a roll. And next thing you know, here we are. Do, do you remember where you were? That, that's one of those shots with, with 007 left on the clock where time kind of stood still. And it's one of those things, if you're a Pistons fan or maybe even on the floor that night, you remember where you were and what vantage point you had of it. Do you guys have, have a recall of that that particular shot in, in that moment? Uh, sitting on the bench watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made the pass and I, I, was, I, I had a perfect view of it. <laughs> I, was counting down, I was counting down the game clock. Um, and the angle I had as I squatted down in front of the bench, I didn't think there was going to be any time left on the clock because Vinny's shot had such an arc on it. You know, I was not disappointed, but I was shocked to see that there was 007 left on it. And I said, okay, that's appropriate enough. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, they still, they still had a shot, right, at the end. They still had a chance. Yeah, Danny Young hit a shot. They thought it was, you know, they, shot, they thought it was good, but it was still in his hands once the clock ran out. So it was all over at that point. <laughs> I think at the time, you guys, uh, were probably since 1954, the Minneapolis Lakers or something, nobody had won all three games on the road in that 2-3-2 format that, that existed at the time. And, and that came in a place in Portland where you guys hadn't won in, in forever. How were you able to to kind of find uh, your game and that success there in a place that had really kind of given you fits over the years? I, I would say, again, during that period of time, um, there wasn't a more dominant basketball team playing than we were offensively and defensively. And we felt that we could we can win the game in a variety way, a variety of ways if we needed to score more we could score, and if we needed to shut you down and defend, we could shut you down and defend. Uh, so we we never felt like we were out of any game, and if we had a, a five-point lead uh, to the other team, we wanted to feel like it was a 15-point lead. I think the thing, too, and Buddha growing up in the Pacific Northwest, he'll attest to this. Isaiah and I have been through some incredibly dreary, lonely, long days in Portland. Where <laughs> the sun didn't even come out. So on the day we landed in Portland, flying from Detroit, uh, it was blue sky, the sun was out, and it was absolutely spectacular. And to me, psychologically, it's like, 
okay, this isn't dreary gray Portland right now. Yeah, it, you get one of those rare days out there in the Pacific Northwest that it, it changes the entire mood. There's no question uh, about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we are, of course, leading you up to uh, Game 5, the 1990 NBA Finals between the uh, Detroit Pistons and Portland Trailblazers. Uh, the night the Detroit Pistons clinched uh, back-to-back NBA titles. That's coming up on Fox Sports Detroit here. Pleased to be joined by the great Isaiah Thomas, the great James Edwards, and the equally great Mike Abdenauer as we uh, kind of look back to 1990. And we've spent a little time talking about the, the last dance and the portrayal uh, of the Detroit Pistons, if you happen to watch those episodes. And it seemed like everybody did uh, last night. Is there... Uh, a, a takeaway for people who, who may have been given their first experience to those 89, 90 champions that you think you people should be left with a, a, a kind of a, a lasting impression of what your team was and what you were all about. You know, I'm, I'm going to defer to, to Mike after now and let, and let him answer this question. And the, and the reason why I'm going to let him answer it is because from a historical standpoint um you know he he's been with the pistons forever and and he saw the ups he saw the downs and you know being a trainer and and being in a training room uh having to you know attend to everyone and and hear everybody's good and bad i mean the the knowledge that the historical knowledge that he would have about that season and about us as people and the games and everything else he Mike would probably be the best to to really answer this question in a, and put it in the proper framework. I think you have to take what Isaiah just said and understand the steps that were taking place at the time. Um, whether it was the game five overtime game against the Knicks where Isaiah scores 16 points in 90 seconds, where it's... <laughs> hey, this is the anniversary of that game, by the way. Today. Okay. Today. Okay. Happy anniversary to that. Um, yeah. Whether it's taking those steps against Boston, in which Danny Danny Ainge's nickname is Vinny the Microwave, whether it's taking those steps where you know you pick up Buddha towards the end of the season and he becomes a contributor right away, you have to understand that we had this taste that we had to satisfy, and there was only one way to satisfy it, and that was going through the rigors of the gauntlet of the crucible to be where we were to win a championship. And then coming so close as we did in 88, I, I credit those guys to have as much guts as it took in that summer to reunite themselves and dedicate themselves to try to do it one more time. And then to come back 12 weeks from the time you finish the season to come back to training camp for the 90 season, that, that just takes tremendous dedication and talent and like I said before, just unbelievable intelligence. And comparing the 89 and 90 teams the way we won it then to the 04 and 05 teams that went to the finals, won it in 04 and 05, the 04, 05 group didn't have those challenges. They they struck lightning in a bottle and bang, next thing you know, we're holding up the trophy again. So it can happen in two different ways. But frankly, the way I like the way we – as a team in the 88, 89, 90 seasons progressed into the finals, that just is very, very satisfying to me personally, and I'm sure to the rest of the group as well. Mike, James talked about, or, or uh, James, Mike talked about when, when you joined the Pistons, and I, I, they were always famous for uh, welcoming guys in a certain way, kind of explaining the Piston way to them. What was your indoctrination like when, when you joined the, the franchise? Uh, let's see. One time, I don't, I forget what game it was, but I let somebody go in for a layup. Isaiah <laughs> grabbed me like this and don't let anybody get to the hole at all. <laughs> so at that point, I knew what was going on. So <laughs> I fit in just perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it was all right. It was all right. I had learned the Detroit way. I didn't know the Detroit way. <laughs> and, and, that, and that was the initial lesson. Well, Isaiah, you get to take guys out to dinner and things like that, wouldn't you? And just kind of sit down with them and say, hey, this is this is what we're all about? No. You know, you know it, it, it's funny. Uh, my, my son asked me the other night. He, 
he goes, you know, Dad, after after you guys, you know, won the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, you know, what did y'all do after the game? I said, well, I, I went home. You know, we 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 had this reputation of being the bad boys, but most of us always just, you know, after the game, we went home and you got ready for the next game. So, you know, in terms of taking Buddha out to dinner, no, we, we would have conversation. Our dinner time was really in the locker room, like after practice. Really, practice would be from 11 to, you know, 12, 30 or 1. We wouldn't leave until like 4 or 5 o'clock because we would be sitting around talking and just having a good time with each other. So that's where a lot of the conversation was taking place at, you know, in the locker room, not necessarily, you know, going out to dinner and socializing. Yeah. George Blaha has uh, has joined us. George, uh, welcome. As we uh, look back to that uh, Game 5 clincher in 1990 against the NBA Finals, uh, thank you for joining us so much. Uh, we're glad you could come on in. Uh, what do you recall back uh, from, from that team and, and that night in particular? Well, it was uh, June the 14th, 1990, a great day in Piston history. Uh, you know, when you went back-to-back championships, it's uh, something absolutely amazing. And the, and the little fellow led the way and was then ended up being uh, a finals MVP. Buddha had a great finals. Nice to see you, James. And you too, Mike. Uh, the, uh, the Portland Trailblazers were a very good team. That's what I remember. And Clyde Drexler, probably in the annals of the uh, guys who are hard to guard is a little bit underrated. Uh, he, he was a, he was a monster and he was in that series too, but uh, our guys were just uh, good enough uh, you know, Buddha with his great footwork, Duckworth was uh, stepping all over himself, and, uh, and and Bill Lambeer was giving everybody problems as he always does. So, uh, but I I love what happened down the stretch. You know, uh, I'm sitting there. And I don't know if you talked about Isaiah getting knocked out cold yet. Uh, oh, all right. I, I, I'm a fight fan. I I know what it means when they say he is out on his feet. And Isaiah was out on his feet with seven minutes to play and the Pistons up one. And I'm, he's right next to me because I'm right next to the bench. And as they brought him off, I think, I'm think i thinking to myself, I've seen that look before. I don't think he's coming back. I mean, he's he's knocked out. And Mike did something super over on the bench with the spelling smokes. And he gets uh, Isaiah back in the game with two minutes left. But now – the Pistons are down seven. They were up one when he, when he went out, down seven when he comes back. And then came Vinny's heroics, Isaiah's heroics, and Vinny's last shot. But that showed me something, my man. You were the captain and then some uh, when you were, frankly, knocked out. Uh, and I didn't expect you to come back. I should have known better. You know that, Junior? I should have known better. <laughs> <laughs> but we had the best train in the business. And, Mike, you know, it's like, you know, it, whenever you go to the bench, if something's wrong, Mike had something for you. You know, <laughs> even even if it was just some words of wisdom he had <laughs> to get you back going. And, um, you know, they, they, they got me back going and I was able to come back in. But I remember running into, I think I ran into Cliff Robinson. It was Cliff. And that's all I remember. Uh, <laughs> you know, my, my nose was bleeding and I, I yeah, I, I was gone. I was going. No. Good for you, Mike. And, and great, great for you, Junior. Thank, thank God we didn't have concussion protocol back in the day. We oh, were, yeah. oh, man. They went over there and said, no, no, you can't put him back in the game. You can't put him back in the game. I would have been out once a week. That I can get hit upside the head or get a cut on the eye. It's not a week that went by. <laughs> Kevin Lockery did games with me uh, when Isaiah was uh, a rookie, I believe. And uh, he said to me after uh, doing a couple of games, he said, George, I had no idea how tough this guy was. He said, I could see he was a great player. And this was his quote. He said, Ray Charles could see he was a great player, but I could not – have any way of knowing until I was there basically ringside to see how tough this guy was. So that toughness carried us a long way. I'll tell you that. Well, and uh, of course it leads to uh, the back-to-back -back championship, which we're about to watch here in just a couple of minutes coming up on Fox sports Detroit. And of course, when you win a championship, 
the locker room celebration gets underway and champagne's being sprayed all around the room amongst other things. And Isaiah, I know you're, you're involved with Churlin, uh, of course, uh, for the past couple of years now. And uh, apparently I hear there's some great grapes this year. What's, I don't know what's going on. What is the, what is the latest with the, with the champagne? <laughs> yeah, for, uh -huh. for this champagne. <laughs> <laughs> you can champagne all over the locker room. You can get it at Plum Market, you know, Myers, Kroger. You can get some at Mike Abdenauer's house, Buddha <laughs> his house, you know. <laughs> but, you know, the, the champagne is, is one of the, the fastest growing champagnes in the United States. And thanks for everybody's support there in Michigan. Um, you know, the our Sherlan champagne is low in sugar, zero sugar. And it, uh, it truly is uh, the, the finest champagne that's on the market right now. Uh, it's only one of the few 90 plus rated portfolios of champagnes that's on the market. And uh, we are come from the old region of France of uh, Champagne, which is the oldest region of the Champagne region. And we make our champagne with only three grapes. We do not use the fourth grape, the Pinot Monet grape. We use the Chardonnay grape, the Pinot Noir grape, and also the Pinot Blanc grape. Those are the only three grapes that we use in our champagne. It's also the first press of the grapes. Outstanding, it sounds great. Sherlon, I'm sorry, I was using my Michigan accent there to pronounce it, uh, Sherlon, for uh, for the champagne aficionados out there. And uh, pop yourself a bottle and pour a glass or two tonight as you watch the Detroit Pistons go back to back and uh, wrap up the 1990 NBA championship against the Portland Trail. It's been a long day for Isaiah on TV. You're gonna need some of that tonight. <laughs> Real quick, Nick. Yes. <laughs> I just want to wish Isaiah a happy birthday. It's coming up on Thursday. Oh, yeah. Have a bottle of champagne and enjoy with you and Lynn. Congratulations. Thank happy birthday. Thank you. Good to be out with all you guys. Sorry I was a little late. Buddha, you were the great, great, great teammate. Good to see you, Blah. Always. Great to see I you, my man. Thank you all for joining us so much. Uh, and uh, bad boys for life. All right, everybody. Uh, go ahead. Enjoy the game. Coming up next on Fox Sports Detroit. There you go. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate you all watching us here on Facebook Live. And uh, we'll hope to see you again real soon. Enjoy the basketball game tonight, everybody.